Hey, what's up guys? Today in this video, we are going to look at how we can have this dashboard use the React's use context to have this auth user capability. So if you see inside my entire dashboard, I have you know three places where I have username as the placeholder so that I would ideally like to display the current logged in user's name. Now, <clears throat> those of you who are already familiar with prop drilling, you will know how it becomes quite difficult for you to send the information to you know, components which are you know, nested inside other components. So for example, you know, we have, let me open up the component tree. If I'm able to, let me see, reload. Okay. Now, this is my you know, React Dev tool where you can see I have this app and then inside the app we have home. Then we have the navigation, sidebar, title bar, hero bar, footer. Now, fortunately, in this particular case, everything is inside home. But imagine if this particular piece was one more component inside the navigation. What if this piece was one more component inside the sidebar. You know, then what will happen is, let's just say if our home component has the user information, then we need to pass it to the navigation. The navigation will pass it to this dropdown kind of a component. It becomes very difficult. Believe me, if you want to architect your components in a way so that they are easy to use, it is going to be very difficult. So one option obviously is you use a state management library like Redux or stuff like that. There are quite a few libraries, but then if it is a small enough requirement, why do we need a library? You know, because the Redux implementation in itself is a bit complicated to be very honest. So what is the other alternative? Well, the other alternative is use context. This use context hook, how we will be using it is something that I will show you. Now, I saw a lot of um, examples on the internet where they are talking about how you can send a text string, which is, you know, your light theme versus dark theme, right? But yeah, a very few were talking about real life examples, like, you know, keeping this username in place. Um, you know, when you log in, you create that user context and that context is passed around to multiple components, right? So that is something which you will see in this video and understand how things work. So this theme is something which I downloaded from the internet. It's a free theme. I could you know, get the GitHub URL from, let me see, this is just boil admin one tailwind, a uh, pretty decent looking theme. So I decided to use it. Okay. Um, nothing proprietary. You can, I think you use it without any problem. Now, and let me show you my code base as well. So I have open it the main index page. I have divided the entire page into navigation, sidebar, title bar, hero, section, then the section, the content section and the footer, right? Now, the first thing that we need to do is get the user context. So what we will do is at the root level, why don't we have a folder called context and then user context dot TSX. Okay. Once we have this user context TSX, the first thing that we need to do is create a context. So why don't we do constant user context equals create context. Okay. Now we will be exporting it because we will need this in multiple places. The create context needs something by default. Now in here, I would like to define the type that you know, we need to pass to the context. So the type is going to be something like, like this. Okay. Um, this is going to be, you know, the two variables which we will create from a state. So we will have a user and let me keep it any for now and then set user again as any for now. We will define it in a bit and say this is an empty user context type data. 
Okay, this is the basic that I have done. Now, we have created the user context. Now, we need to create the provider. So the provider will be something like export constant user context provider. This is going to be something like this. And in here we will have return user context dot provider. And in here, we will need to destructure the children and pass it over here. Okay. And then what we need to do is define the type over here. So user context provider type. Let's define this as well. Okay. So we will have children which is react react node so this is done now the only missing element over here is the property value is missing this is where what we will do is this context now whichever component is going to use this context they will have the ability to get two things one the user object in itself and the second one is a function which will allow them to set the user object. So it's a state variable as I said. So use state something like this. And why don't we have value equals user set user. Now the type of user which we are expecting why don't we define that as well type auth user is equal to email string and name string as well so what what i can do is come over here and do this or null start with null okay this is done let's see what all things do we need so that we can export them we will need the user context type i think so yeah so export this okay and obviously the create context which i have here we need to be export this is something which we are exporting so now with this in place i'm just trying to see how do we go about it so let's just say the first thing that i would like to do is user context provider okay well i will wrap all the components which can require the user object right so this provider is you know, wrapping all of them so for example if i don't keep the footer inside this provider then footer will never be able to get that okay now let's go to our sidebar and over here we do constant user context equals use context and we get user context Okay, why don't we also console it out and see what's coming in. So I'll go over here, open up the console, fresh, user is null, set user is a function. So we have the basic things in place. That's a good sign. Why don't we now do one more thing? Let's just say right now, <clears throat> we have the username over here okay fine i'm just trying to see if i can you know, get some place where i can have okay maybe what i will do is distributed and now let's go into a sidebar let's do it properly tables where is tables right href let me check what happens okay so basic things are in place ideally in a next.js application you should not be doing this but for the sake of this tutorial i am taking a little bit of shortcut so we have our context over here we saw when we console that we get a set user function so we can use that right so we can do something like set user user context dot set user 
will have name as Amitav Roy. Email should have taken the hint. I don't know why that didn't work. We'll need to check that. But if I do click on it, nothing happened. Why? Because obviously it is not supposed to. I have to change that, right? It won't magically know that I need to get that user dot name. Okay. For some reason, the user hinting is not coming in. I need to check that. Maybe you know, some kind of a hinting will help. It says cannot read property name of null, which is quite obvious because initially it can be null, right? So why don't I do something like this and it does have this over here and my sidebar now shows this. My sidebar over here is able to get that because I clicked over here and why don't we have our form, forms, forms, forms. And this will make it as hash. And I'll just copy this entire function from here. Where is my forms? A tag. Paste it over here. Change it to John Doe. John.do at gmail.com. Please don't email him. Okay. And so if I click over here, this changes. Now, this is pretty straightforward. This is nothing new. The major fun comes in when, let me close out the sidebar, the page, the context, everything is gone. Let's focus on the component navigation. Oops. In here, right? So what we will do is the same thing that we did in our previous component, use, use context. Okay, and we say which context we want to use, which is the user context. And then let's find the username. Where is our username? I'm not able to get it. Username, right. Here it is. So user context dot user dot name. Right. This is done as well. And this is my title bar, I think title bar no I think the title bar is this so maybe I had navigation which is here which component is this hero I thought so okay maybe I didn't open the correct one ah yeah here it is so why don't we copy this thing the use context definition, add the missing imports, and over here we'll do user context dot. What happened? Use context, user context dot user dot name. This is a question mark and now you can see this is John Doe, changes to Amitav Roy, and this is how your entire application is now relying on one data source and changing that has an effect in the entire application. So you don't need to worry to pass the props through your entire application, doesn't matter how deep your component is. I can literally have a component which is called username which displays this and it can use the context and it can be inside any level of nesting but the beauty is the use context is allowing you to basically use the data the function and uh, you know the the object the user object and the function to change it simultaneously so in some situations you can even have like a button over here which doesn't even display the uh, username but it allows you to change the object right so that's the beauty of 
using context. So that's about it guys. If you like this video, do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.